The next topic we would like to talk about is installation and patching. And what if you could not only download and install the base release and then afterwards the most recent release update and then maybe some one-off patches, but do this all in one pass, including the most recent old patch as well. And this is what we would like to talk about. And in addition, also show you the aspects of the new default, actually the read-only homes. So installation and patching at the same time. When you download a release, it's typically always the base release. So in 19C, it's 19.3.0. So you get 19.3.0, but what if you could install at the same time also the most recent release update? And this is something you can do since Oracle Database 18C. So you can install and patch at the same time. The installer got a feature for that. So what we see on the slide here is the grid infrastructure installation where this works as well. So we create the directory. I name it here grid 99.0. And I change into that directory. I unzip the base release. This is 19.3.0 grid infrastructure. And then in the same directory, I unzip also the most recent release update. What I start, the installation with grid setup, but I pass on this minus apply RU parameter and the directory name of the subdirectory where I unzip the patch into. And the same thing, of course, works with the database as well. And here you may use this way more often. So I create a directory, u one up Oracle product 1990, change into the directory, unzip the base release 19.3.0, and then unzip also the most recent release update into that directory. And I start the installer with minus apply RU and I pass on the directory where I unzipped the patch to. In addition, you can also install one-offs if you want to. Minus apply RU for an RU here, here a little bit older one, and some one-offs. And you may wonder about that strange patch slash and x slash and y slash. I just shortened this a little bit to fit on the slide here. But when you apply more than one RU, but also one off patches in addition, it's important that you keep the subdirectory trees completely separate. Because otherwise, if you unzip all of them under one single directory, maybe for instance, under patch, then the patch XML file will be overwritten by the next patch and the next patch again. And you can't install it because the installer won't find the different patches you would like to apply. So the rule is here, if you use that and you have more than one RU, you have one offs as well, keep them in totally separate directory trees and then the installation will find them. Unfortunately, uh, not good news, this is not implemented on Windows yet, and I don't have any information if and when this will be available on the Windows platform as well. Then in addition to that feature, we have the read-only home. So also that became a new feature in 18C, and I haven't seen so many people using that, even though I use it by myself, because it adds quite a little bit of convenience when you exchange your homes quite often. The idea of read-only homes is that the flexible part of the home is in one part, and the constant or steady part, like your TNS names files or certain admin files for your database, stay in a separate part. And when you exchange the home, that steady part will stay constant. So you don't have to copy over your TNS names and your listener aura over and over and over again to a new home. And this applies to all the files you would like to keep. So it makes exchanging the homes, especially when you patch with the technique I showed you before, much, much easier. It's of course documented. So the idea is simple and easy cloning and provisioning. And configuration and log files stay outside of the Oracle home. What do you have to do here? It's very, very simple. You install as usual, as I showed you before, and then you run 
R-O-O-H for read only Oracle home CTL minus enable. That's a short script. You see it on the right side of the slide here. It just takes a few seconds and uh, it checks, sets the um, permissions correctly for the directories and the files, and that's it. Very simple, very straightforward. I will show you this in a demo in a second. And here's the demo already. So in this demo, I would like to show you, first of all, the installation of Linux base release plus a release update, and then changing this home to a read-only home before going forward. So let's go in. And at first, we create a directory. I name it ROOH19 for read-only home 19. And now I copy from my shared folders the 19.3.0 zip file, and then the release update all into this directory. Plus, not to forget, opatch. So what do we have here? We have three zip files, 19.3, the release update, and opatch. So I unzip at first the base release, and then I clean it up. Then I remove the opatch directory from my unzipped base release, and I unzip now opatch, the most recent one. Remove the zip file as well. And now I unzip also the release update and remove it. Let me set my Oracle home before I go on. And now I call the run installer with minus apply are you? And I just named a subdirectory where I unzip the patch. Here it is only one, so I don't have to care or keep that in separate sub subdirectories. The installer starts, set up the software only. It's a single instance installation, enterprise edition, of course, and permission set correctly. You can pass on also to have the root sh executed, so I pass on my credentials. Still, when the installation is running, and this is very quick because it configures, the files are already in place, it configures now my files, but it will stop at one point and ask me, are you really sure for the root sh? Yes, I am. And that's it. It's installed. It has installed not only 19.3, but also the release update. Now I go to the bin directory, and here I execute ROOH CTL minus enable read only home CTL minus enable. And it's really as quick as I show it here in the demonstration. That's it. Now I have a read only home, separation of configuration and log files, and on the other side, the Oracle home files. And this makes it much, much easier now to go, for instance, to 1910 in January or to the next RU. When we speak about read only homes, there are two very important directories we have to discuss here. One is the Aura base config and the other is the Aura base home. And I would like to show you the difference and what these two mean. On the left side, you see the Aura base config. So under this uh, directory variable, I would call it, uh, we find a DBS directory, which contains the password file and also the SP file of our database and the log file. Under the Aura base home, we find now the flexible parts of the installation, like the log files, uh, opatch, LS inventory stuff, network admin, DBS install, assistance. So these two parts are very important because when I exchange now the home, I flip to a different home, then these stay constant. So my database will always, or my environment will always point to the files which I don't want to exchange when I provision a new home. And this is basically the idea of the read-only homes. Makes life much easier. Try it out. It's really a cool feature. Just make sure you are at 19C or newer. And as I said before, it's the default with 21C. So let's go on to the next feature from here. 